Om Mani Padme Om Mani Padme Om Mani Padme Om Mani Padme Om. This chapter is called The Homeless Brothers. Like I said when I was reading the book Teachings of the Buddha, one of the chapters was called Homeless Brothers. I didn't really understand what um, what it meant. Basically it was all the followers of the Buddha. Um, I think they said by the fifth rainy season, that's how they counted years in, in, uh, in, in those days. And uh, he had over a thousand homeless brothers that would um, follow him around. And so as the years went by, and of course thinking myself as an enlightened or a Buddha, I um, developed the, the idea of homeless brothers. At first it was five original homeless brothers uh, that I taught many times when I came down from the mountain. It seemed like every time I would come back to cabin number five and uh, you know, after Bukhar and stuff like that, many people would come and want to hear what I had to say about the teachings. And um, The first five original homeless brothers were Cassidy, Murray, Josh, Chris, and Patrick. And eventually it became the next one was Michael and then Tony and then Eamon and also Ken and my uh, one of my friend Al. Just over the years there's been many homeless brothers. Even my brother uh, Russell tried on being a homeless brother for a little while. And being a homeless brother doesn't mean you don't have a home. It just means that you're searching for some kind of new energy or some kind of new thought thought train or um, Everybody that I call somebody a homeless brother, they always get offended. And I say, no, homeless brother doesn't mean you don't have a home. All these fellows that I just mentioned all have homes and have had different homes over the years. But, you know, some of us have taken turns camping out. I had a campsite up on uh, Blackburn Lake, and I lived there for about, in between the acid trip and the Eric Martin. I lived there for about on and off for about a year and a half, maybe two years. And that was sort of where the homeless brothers really uh, took off. And uh, I think the, the homeless brothers were, and also homeless sisters. And after you know, I had to introduce homeless sisters into the to the equation because uh, many women were coming to me also for teachings. And uh, over the years, uh, um, the one of the, the mother of my daughter, she was a, like I would say, a homeless brother, a homeless sister, Ula, and uh, she. Uh, I met her just after. Um, I came back from Portland because I was eating fairly well at Portland and I decided that I wanted to, you know, meet someone that could cook and someone who was good at business and spiritual and stuff like that and f preferably a blonde because I, I, I like blonde-haired women and uh, so Ola came into my life um, just about, I don't know, it was a couple months after after I went to Bokar and Boucher and I was hanging out with quite a few, you know, Patrick and Cassidy and all the homeless brothers and, and Murray and stuff like that and then I decided that um, it would be nice to have a um, maybe to have a girlfriend, and because all all my the homeless brothers, one thing I do know about them is most of them are single, and that they uh, they do have girlfriends the odd time, but not anything steady. Or um, but actually, the only person, two of the homeless brothers, Chris had a had a child, and Cassidy had a child. So it's it's not like they're always single. It's just more of a they're. Um, sort of viewed as people, you know, as a single Buddha or, or a Buddha without consort. But there's also many uh, homeless, homeless brothers that have a consort, so they're sort of like a Buddha with consort. Um, like I said, I met Ula just after I came back from uh, from Portland, and uh, we hit it off right away. She was a very spiritual person. She has a, a, a teacher, uh, she calls Miraji, and... Um, we, you know, we we uh, clicked on many different levels. You know, she believed I believe in the three jewels: the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And the Dharma is the teachings, and the, the Sangha is the, the people who follow the Buddha's teachings. Or that's sort of like the Sangha. My version of the Sangha members is what I would call the homeless brothers. Um, over the years, I have had many, many, many adventures with the homeless brothers, and many different things have happened. And you know, of course. Uh, it's given me a chance to sort of explain the teachings on a kind of a layman's term to people, whoever was interested. And there's, you know, we have, um, I've had a car for many years, so I'll, sometimes I'll take him on a car ride and we'll, we'll go to a spot and we'll sort of, one of my favorite spots is down on Churchill Beach. And we just kind of park there and that's where, where I give some of my best Dharma speeches. And uh, 
anyway the homeless brothers have become sort of a, um, a thing on its own and I guess uh, they say that I, th I want to be uh, number five in the homeless brothers or because of uh, I came from cabin five and, and Maitreya the fifth Buddha the Buddha that's supposed to come to prophesize Buddha the next Buddha and uh, so I wanted to be number five but they said no you're homeless brother number one Anyway, um, that's my chapter on Homeless Brothers. I could write a whole book about it. It's just sort of touching base on um, sort of the idea and the notion that uh, the Buddha had f uh, several homeless brothers and people around him at the time and people that he gave teachings to. Om Mani Padme, Om Mani Padme.